For this project you will need worsted weight cotton. Today we are using I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. You will also need size 6 knitting needles. We are using the Knit Picks Caspian Circular Needles. There will be a link in the description below. I emailed hoping to maybe get a promo code and if we do manage to get one, then that will also be in the link description below. You will also need darning needle. We are using a blunt tipped darning needle that is just simple and you can get it from anywhere. As well as any kinds of scissors. Today we are using a collapsible set which you can travel with, which is nice. To begin with, you're going to want to cast on 25 stitches using the long tail method. When you're done, you're going to want to leave a nice, really long tail in order to sew up later. And I will show you what we're going to do. You're going to want to flip to the wrong side and begin with an increase. Make sure that you're grabbing your yarn attached to your ball and not the tail that's happening here. You want to go in. Oh, that made it really big. Well then. And scoop that up. And then go through the other side and increase. Really, you can increase whatever way you would like. I just want to make sure that you get two stitches in the one stitch right there. Then you're going to want to knit to the very last two stitches. I'm knitting continental, so if that looks a little strange to you all, be sure to check out our other knitting tutorials on how to knit continent. Okay, so we have knit to the last two stitches in which you're going to want to decrease by making those two stitches into one stitch. So now we are back at 25 stitches and now we're going to want to flip to the other side. Now you're going to want to decrease these two stitches. The way that we're doing this is that we're making it so that the fabric starts going like this and like that on the other side. So that it's, it's... The way that we're doing this is making it so that when we decrease, we're giving the fabric a lean so that it is going leftward. It is leaning leftward. We're gonna now knit to the very last stitch. Okay. Now that we're at the sti last stitch, we're going to want to increase again. Again, we're making it so that this is leaning leftward. So when you look at the fabric, you can see the obvious trend of it starting to go that way. And so we're going to continue doing those same two rows where we increase the first stitch, knit to the last stitch, decrease, and then flip do decrease, knit to the last stitch, increase, and we're going to do that for a total repetition of 18 times. So this is your first one, we need to do it 17 more times. I will meet you back here once I've gotten to that. All right. And we're back! So now we've finished our 18 repetitions and we're on our final row. On this final row, we're going to want to cast off, and I will be right back once that's casted off. Okay, so we've cast off, we've used a nice stretchy bind off, and we're going to now, oh no, well, that went down, okay, so now we're going to leave a nice long tail for sewing, if I can actually cut it, and it's very hard to see what you're doing through the viewfinder. Alright, so now we feed it through, we leave a nice long tail. Once we've done that, we're going to want to make it so that these two ends are touching in a tube-like manner. So what we're going to want to do is put it up like that, like a square, and we're going to take the other side and go like this. Alright, so now the goal is to get it so that this and this are together. So I'm going to show you how to do a seamless sew job. It makes it look like there is just knitting instead of it just being a normal sew job, which I think is rather cool. So we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to feed our thread from the left over here. You'll notice that there are two. You're going to want to take the top one and you're going to want to find your stitch down here. So you'll look here and 
over in this section, you'll find a V underneath this garter pearl ridge. Go under there and pick up that V right there. Just feed it through and then you're attached. Try to make sure that that stays where it should be. Now, you're gonna wanna see this V up here. See this one right here? Notice there is a line right here, but you're gonna wanna really focus on going underneath that and then finding the V over here. You're gonna wanna go under and over. Find the V next to the V that you just put in there. Go under and over. And again, go up to the V where it's on the top ridge here and pull over. You're gonna wanna repeat this until you get to the end. There's a V right here. It's a little bit of a, you have to really look at it sometimes to figure out where it is. You've got a V above this, right here-ish, there we go. And you'll notice that it starts making this format if you actually pull it taut enough. You have to make sure that your tension's right with this because you want it to look like a V. Okay, come on, buddy. There we go. And see, I pull it taut just enough so that it's a V. Go up here on that one, pull it taut, but not too taut, because if you do it too tightly, then it's going to not look like it's knitted. Go under here and pull so it's just like a V formation. And I will be back as soon as I get that done, and then I'll show you what you do next. Okay, so now we've gotten to the end here, where we're going to feed our yarn through the other edge here, and then we're gonna feed it back through the other one to kind of flatten out this edge. That was my cat jumping from things. I should probably move that, but there we go. So now we've got a nice flat edge, and you'll notice that here, it's really hard to tell where there's a garter ridge, but the inseam is right there. So now we're going to want to start, we've got this lovely tube here, it's nice, we've got two big giant holes, so how does that turn into that? So we're going, oh no, my darning needle, it fell through, let's fix that. Alright, I did not leave myself enough of a string there. So we're gonna wanna start feeding our darning needle through, weaving it in and out of the edges here. If you need to give yourself some room, you can always pull through, pull it taut. You can always try to get it nice and tight there. Pull this and give myself a bit more room. Get that string over there. And I'm on the inside, so I'm gonna go back to the outside, go back to the inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, all the way back to the beginning. So that's our beginning stitch that we started that at. I'm gonna actually cut it underneath the two stitches so that it doesn't look weird. I'm gonna pull this nice and tight, but also be sure that if you're not using I Love This Cotton and you're using like sugars and cream or anything like that, those will rip if you pull too tightly. So always just be, try to get it as tight as you can, but be wary that cotton will rip if you do not go slowly at it. So now you'll see that it's all t nice and tight, but there's this little tiny hole here. Try to pull it as tight as you can, and I like to go to the opposite side, wherever you see there's a ridge, like where there's a bump raised, and go through underneath it. And I go through all of them just a couple of times, pull it tight. Anything that you see is raised, just try to go through it and pull it, like right there. And actually that should be it, because I did a fairly decent job there. It's not the most glamorous or gorgeous or any of that, but it does the job. And there you go. I, I foreseeably you could pick up all those stitches with like a crochet hook, possibly and um, possibly even just crochet it closed using decreases, but I don't do that. Now I'm gonna wanna take my darning needle that I've already gotten all flat and everything, and I'm gonna push it through the center. 
flip it inside out. And now I'm gonna want to find the inseam, which is right there, and I'm going to feed it through that to try to close it up a little bit. It strengthens your inseam while also hiding your tail. I like to hide the tail a little bit, which is nice. So let's close that up a little bit. Makes it a stronger seam. And now I've got this little tail here. I'm actually just gonna leave that there because why bother cutting it? It's gonna be the inside. So flip it back inside out. Find your other tail. You've got this other tail here. Right here. Right here. So I'm going to take that and thread it through my darning needle. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. I'm going to start weaving in and out, which is a little bit harder on this one because of the way that the seaming is, but it's basically every like half an inch you're going to want to weave in and out. Make sure you're getting through a stitch and keep going. In. Out. In. Out. I'm gonna pull that through because I'm starting to lose darning needle space. I'm going to then I'm out right now, so I need to go back in. Actually, get in. There we go. Out. In. All the way back. Up there to make it not do that. In and now I'm pretty sure I'm back at the beginning again. So let's pull that nice and taut, nice and tight, and close up the hole. Go to the opposite side of the hole there, pull it inward, and you'll notice that it's fairly done. I'm gonna take anything that looks like it's above through it a couple times. So now we've got you there, so let's bring you in, pull you there, pull it tight, go here, pull that tight, makes it flat. All right, so right now we've pretty much got the twashi going, but what I like to do is instead of just leaving it so that it's you get baggy there, I center my hole here. I center my hole here, I try to make so it's centered. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to feed it through the center and poke it through the other side completely and pull. Try to make sure that your needle is hidden inside here. So now I'm going to take this, go at an angle and feed it through to the other side. And I do that five to ten times depending on how really stuck I want it in there. So now I've got you. I'm going to feed it through the other side at an angle. Pull. Flip. Feed at an angle. And go. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I feel like it's completely centered. It's a little mangled on one side. But... And now we're going to want to feed this and I'm gonna wanna make it so that it's hidden inside of the Tawashi, so I'm gonna feed it through the side like this. And we're gonna wanna take our scissors and cut our tail off. But don't do it so close, try to do it so that it's right above it, and then you can just wiggle it, and it comes right down there. So now we have our lovely little Tawashi, and these are very useful. If you liked this tutorial, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and like if you did like it. Um, if you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. If you uh, want to leave a picture of what you made, I would love to see those. Uh, we have a Ravelry, Ravelry page which is awesome, and you can always link us there. Um, we love seeing what projects people make out of these, and they're really cool looking. So that is how you make our lovely little Tawashis, and these last for years. They're awesome. I love them. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.